Hello, welcome to another US GeoGuessr Professor video where you're going to follow along with me as I play five rounds in the United States. I'm a US geography expert. I'm a GeoGuessr enthusiast. I am a professor only of English and I am here to help you improve your US GeoGuessr game, particularly region guessing, this very difficult country. So we're going to be using the map, a stochastic populated United States. It has about 125K locations, as you can read. And I always like to start off no moving to see what we can do with just our, our initial impressions. That helps a lot with region guessing. And then if we need to, we'll move. We'll probably end up moving on every round. And I'm going to be doing 10 minute rounds just to give us a chance to follow along with my thinking and my strategy and my analysis for region guessing the US. So are we on our first seed? Uh, first of all, you can notice this uh, kind of sandy looking concrete and uh, really kind of sandy looking soil. This culvert to the right, stump grinding 337. That does not immediately help me. Area codes, as we know, in the US are very difficult sometimes, and especially the more rural you are. And even though this is a stochastic populated United States, you get a lot of suburban and almost exurban rounds here. See how this, the asphalt here is bicolored? The road surface in the middle is a little bit different, it looks like, than the road surface on either side. That's, I think, interesting and noteworthy. What can we determine about the vegetation? We have some very high trees over here. These ones right in the center of my picture, I think, are very nice examples of some southern pines. They're very spindly and sparse at the top. Uh, they always look kind of fragile, not like the really robust kind of pine trees you might see in the Pacific Northwest, somewhere like that. Straight ahead, it looks like we have a bright yellow license plate, which is interesting. We would expect to see those in New York. We would expect to see those in Alaska. We're 100% not in Alaska, certainly not with that 337 area code, certainly not with this kind of vegetation. I see a lot of southern pines everywhere. I see this kind of dirty sandy soil. We're going to start moving just a little bit so we can get some more clues here. Let's go, let's jump over to the other side of the road. I'm curious as to what this sign says to the south. I believe this is our closest sign. Wall hangers. Drive right driving school. Okay, so it's a little guy with a bow. That's an archery center. Okay, interesting. Going into the sun, maybe I should have picked the other way. 337, okay. If we take a look at this scene to the right, you see we have this kind of like low scrubby land there. Again, the soil's getting even, it looks like even more sandy there to the side of this road. What can we discover over on this side? Deridder towing auto auction to ridder towing okay these clues to an american are quite helpful to ridder i think i know where we are but let's look at what clues we've had so far 337 i don't really recognize that area code vegetation a lot of southern pines around a lot of this kind of uh, sandy soil certainly is reminiscent of the south 
all of these ranch houses certainly reminiscent of, I would say in particular, the Deep South as well. I don't think we're anywhere in the low country. I think it would look a little bit, uh, for lack of a better term, swampy if we were over in the Eastern Deep South. So even before I saw Deridder towing, and by no means is that a solid lock of a clue, but I was thinking already that we might be in the western portion of the Deep South, uh, maybe even as far east as East Texas, but... I would say if we were somewhere around Houston, I might expect it to even look a little swampier than this. But I think what is really igniting some recognition in me is that name Deridder. I believe that there's a fairly big city called Deridder, Louisiana. I also think it's pretty close to the Texas state line. I'm not mistaken. I think an area code that started with three would make sense in this area. I think that all the vegetation we're seeing would make sense. Yeah. And here we get our first really definitive sign. Uh, centered in the screen there is a Louisiana State Highway sign, East Louisiana 26. So that absolutely confirms that we're in Louisiana, and almost assuredly we are in DeRitter, Louisiana. North 171, East 190. That would point also towards this region of East Texas, Louisiana. You see how 190 comes through here, north of uh, Lake Charles, Lafayette. We are northwest of New Orleans. There's Lake Charles, Vinton. For some reason, I think DeRitter is, yeah, it's right there at the top, 190. There's 26 coming in. Steamboat Bills. So where were we originally? We have three minutes left. We must be near the intersection of 26, 171, and 190, which would put, put us... Uh, Really, it looks like in uh, near downtown, Deridder, Deridder, sorry if there is such a place. What highway could we possibly be on here? Going northwest, uh, northwest, yeah. Divided highway, it looks like. If we can get this cross street, it's going to help us. Yeah, that confirms divided highway, thank you. Uh, here. Lee something, Lee something road. Lee, very common name in the American South. Lee Ellis Road, something like that. So if we're going northwest towards, could we be here? Yeah, we definitely could be. So there's 112. We could be going, uh, yeah, northwest into Deridder. And we saw, what gave it away? DeRitter Tires or something, right? DeRitter Auto Repair. So if we're going northwest into DeRitter. Hmm. DeRitter Dog Park. I tell you, we have under two minutes. This is, uh, we may not be able to pinpoint exactly where we are, unfortunately. I would like to say that I'm good at getting city and state, and I'm less good at pinpointing. I don't really care about 5Ks, though. I mean, I say that as I'm not going to get a 5K here, but to me, they're kind of incidental. I want to know where we are. I mean, I think it's beyond apparent that we're in DeRitter, Louisiana. So 26 was going off there to the southeast. So could we possibly be closer 
There's O.B.Y. at Road. Lee Nichols Road. Yeah, I think that's where we are. Because remember, L.A. 26 went off there. So we may very well get a 5K, even though I told you, I really care. Going north-northwest, just a little bit south of... What did I just say that road was? Lee Nichols Road. Looks like that turns into O.B. Wyatt Road. Okay, so it looks like we're coming off of this other road right there. That must be... Huh. Wait, was that Lee Nichols Road? Yeah, I think that might have been. That's O.B. Wyatt. Yeah, there we go. So we're kind of like in between Lee Nichols and O.B. Wyatt. We're just kind of past O.B. Wyatt. Right there on 190, 171, nine seconds left, 5K, one yard, okay. Now, I promise you I wouldn't have been super upset if we would have like 4998 at that or something. Again, region guessing the U.S. is so tough we were so close. If we would have plonked anywhere in Deritter, that would have been a dual ender right there. And I know I've been in Deritter before. Uh, so it's got to come up at least multiple times if you play the U.S. enough. Okay, so what are we getting from our initial look here? Certainly we're not in Louisiana anymore. Just way different, right? The trees, the foliage is way different. Uh, kind of very gently rolling this over here to the left looks almost marshy certainly somewhere in the northern i would say tier of the u.s and i wouldn't think we're in the pacific northwest because we're largely deciduous we have a few evergreens sprinkled in uh, but we're largely these kind of uh, deciduous trees that are changing in the fall season it looks like aren't those beautiful these red trees here we're definitely out in the middle of a suburb for sure even maybe like the exurb of a city i don't immediately recognize these street signs we're on Cortland street they are pretty nondescript pretty generic green and white street signs you see those just all over the United States. Street signs generally are either green and white or blue and white, and the vast majority are green and white. So you have to notice real subtle distinctions, but those are very not descript. Let's see if we can get any vibes at all off of some more foliage. Uh, can we narrow this down at all? I mean, we're in the north and not in the south anymore. We're in somewhere that's largely deciduous. To me, initial vibes are giving upper Midwest. This kind of generic looking suburban landscape would certainly point that way to me. I wouldn't think we're in New England. I mean, the the landscape would be different. Uh, I think it'd be greener, denser, more forested. So I think um, everything to me is pointing to the upper Midwest. We have also front plates. Interesting. Um, Indiana does not have front plates. Ohio does not have front plates, but a lot of times you'll see coverage in Ohio that has front plates because um, they switched over in 2020, I believe. To me, as a Midwestern resident, a lot of these houses, a lot of this architecture, this bike path here, now it's this kind of like open marshy terrain that's getting me, that's maybe making me think maybe we're even farther up in the Midwest then I'm thinking. Maybe we're farther up. But lots of pickup trucks, lots of very kind of cookie cutter, suburban landscapes, hardcore mixture of trees, Catalina Lauf for Congress. Don't recognize good old Catalina there. This honestly is a tough round. It's very suburban. This is the kind of round where I feel the pain 
that a lot of geoguessers feel in America. They get plonked MDC. Could that be a clue? MDC. MDC. Something D Corporation, of course. 815. 815. Okay, so we get our first area code, 815. We get another area code, 815, MDC Environmental Services. Marengo Disposal. Marengo Disposal. Marengo, okay. Marengo is certainly a place name. I believe it's Native American origin. There is a Marengo, Ohio. Marengo, Ohio is pretty rural. It's northeast of Columbus. The other Marengo I can think of, which would make more sense, is Marengo, Illinois. Illinois would have front plates. Illinois would almost assuredly look like this, west of Chicago, with that kind of almost upper Midwestern vibe little marshy for some reason that, that made me think when we were back at the origin kind of looking at that marshy lakey landscape um for some reason that was making me think of uh, maybe wisconsin or even parts of minnesota so i think all of that would fit i think we're gonna get a state highway sign here which is gonna make everything click nope it's a speed limit sign Okay, what do we have so far? Marengo as a possible street name. Looks like cornfield there. Looks like we are in distant exurb of a city. Farm country, silo there off to the left. 815 area code. Vote Joe Gottmuller. Wow, that sounds like almost... Maybe I'm embarrassing myself, but is that like a Swedish German name? Upper Midwest would be where a lot of uh, immigrants from that area settled, certainly. Where we are, almost everything about Illinois would make sense here, I think. Now, where's Marengo, Illinois? There's Marengo, Illinois. Would Marengo, Illinois be plausible? Notice it's kind of in between outer Chicagoland suburbs and Rockford, Illinois. So those kind of upper Midwest vibes would be definitely in full force around Rockford. Look at this explosion of color with fall foliage. We saw that almost instantaneously in that neighborhood. McHenry County Conservation District, all falling into place. That McHenry County is northwestern Illinois, or at the very least, uh, northwest Chicagoland. So everything about this fits. MDC, Marengo, McHenry County, Kishwaukee Headwaters. So many Native American names here. Let's go back, since I think I am pretty confident we're in Marengo, Illinois. Look at how suburban this looks, but we're also just out in, really, we got very quickly into farm country. And Marengo would be a perfect candidate to look like this. Look, it's right off the tollway, coming out of Chicago. It's almost when you get to Rockford. It really is sort of a very outer suburb of Chicago land. Hercules and Cortland. I would assume that we are somewhere on the outskirts of Marengo here at Hercules and Cortland. We, we made it to something that looked a lot like farmland really very quickly coming out of this neighborhood. We really, though, could be in almost any of these neighborhoods. I gave up early on 5 k in the last round. There's Kishwaukee. We saw that 
Kishwaukee. Bulldog Antiques. See, to me, this looks like we could be almost somewhere down here, Hennig, Paulson, Bradfield. In this just kind of outer development in Marengo. I would almost think if we're closer to the middle of Marengo, we would be, would look a little bit more kind of small towny than this. But man, a lot of Chicago land, outer Chicago land looks like this. Kirkland, Hercules. Let's get a little bit more of a bird's eye view of Marengo. If we're not Marengo, we got to be really close, right? I mean, we could we be? I don't know. I don't know. We're running out of time. Yeah, see, I was thinking we might be closer to, say, somewhere like Woodstock, Illinois. Just looked a little bit more suburban, but we saw Marengo. It looks like wherever this is. Yeah, there's Hercules. That's interesting. So would that put us in Woodstock, Illinois? But they're still using Marengo trash. Okay, so we we're real close. Eight and a half miles away. That was a hard one. Where's our third seat going to take us? Okay. Uh, I think this is the yet another landscape here. In our first round, we were... Where were we in our first round? It seems like so far, so long ago. Somewhere. Oh, DeRitter, Louisiana. And then we were in Woodstock, Illinois, right outside Marengo. Where could we be now? Ah, uh, look at that. Don't you just love when Google Street View kind of glitches? You get that beautiful view of the unblurred license plate. I'm going to take a drink of beer just in celebration. Currently enjoying a really tasty milk stout at the moment while I play with you all. So you see, of course, that's a Texas plate. I really just happened on that. I wasn't really trying to even get that plate. But let's go back to our initial view. See, there's no way we could be in Illinois. The foliage is very different. We get this much sandier soil. I think we are a lot closer to where we were in round one in DeRitter, Louisiana. See how similar the soil is? It's kind of dormant looking, almost in patches. It's very scalped. It looks like it's starved for water and it's very sandy. So all of this would be indicative of Texas. But where could we be in Texas? Texas is a hard place to region guess. I think that just the general foliage and the general look of where we just was, where we just were, Sometimes I lose my English ability when I'm trying to concentrate on GeoGuessr, sorry. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we were near um, Louisiana, where we were in the beginning. It just has a, like a very similar vibe. Everything looks kind of uh, low, concrete, one-story construction. So certainly like Western Deep South again would be the general vibe. We see on that billboard, or we saw on that billboard, Lumberton Hospital. So are we in Lumberton, Texas? Certainly heard of Lumberton. My Texas game could be better. Crawdads. Okay, so that would lend itself. We see crawdads. I'll even zoom in on that. That would lend itself to that we're in East Texas. Somewhere near that Louisiana line, if we're looking at crawdads, that's a small sort of lob, mini lobster looking crustacean creature, of course. And I'm sure you know what a crawdad is, but they're called different things in different regions. So let's kind of zoom in where we were before, because I think just from the vibes, that's going to be our most fruitful area. There's DeRitter. And then you see just southwest of DeRitter, Lumberton. So that is directly north of Beaumont, Texas. There is 326. Does 326 match up? 
there's 327. So I would assume that it does. <coughs> Sour Lake. Sour Lake. No, there's 326 to Sour Lake. South 326. So can we be in this little town here? Countsy. Countsy. Count. I've never heard of this little town. So if 326 is going off to the south, southeast, going to Sour Lake, yeah, it looks like we're probably in that little town rather than Lumberton. Do we see this little Crawdad's Market? Caroline's Quality, Ma's Grill, or any of these little places here in downtown. Where did we start? We started off in that little neighborhood. See, yeah, that's Northwest Lumberton, Best Price Lumberton, Silsby Ford. But, you know, they're advertising for Silsby and Lumberton. Looks like 326 just goes, yeah, south there out of, ah, oh man, I hope I'm not saying that wrong, Countsy, Countsy, Countsy. Never in my life have been in this tiny little town, wherever we are, Farmhouse Drug Company. Looks like a little pharmacy. I tell you, we're in a populated place, that's for sure. There's an area code, but I don't think we need it to understand that we're really close somewhere to Lumberton and Silsby, Texas. Tejas Liquor, there you go, Tejas. Donut Palace going north. Okay, where's the Donut Palace? One would think Donut Palace would be on here, right? Tejas Grocery Store, Donut Palace, yeah, there we go. So I was really, really convinced we were in this little town here, County, Texas. But let's, since we have four minutes, we got Texas so quickly, you know, admittedly off of that license plate, but I think just the general vibe was very, very close to that first round, so I thought we would have to be somewhere pretty close to there. I mean, within a few hours at least, maybe. Williford. Williford? Going east-west? Uh, yep, yep, Williford going east-west into kind of the main highway or the main thoroughfare here of Cuncy, Texas. I'm going to stop saying that. Allen Street, Foxy Deer Street, first, second. Okay, so now we're up in numbers. Williford. Looking east down Williford. Crocker. I mean, we have to be here, right? Could that be... Okay, so that's going into... It looks like this main... Yeah, that was the drugstore. That was Mott Supply Steel, Tejas Liquors, Tejas Liquors. Is that the same thing as Tejas Grocery Store? Are we up here? I'm confused. I'm not really sure where we are here. I thought that confirmed, but that's Tejas Liquor, Wiggins. Allen Street. But we saw a Donut Palace, right? I give up. Or yeah, there we go. Oh, there's Williford. Why in the world didn't I see Williford? We are within yards. 4994. I will certainly take that. Count Z, Texas. Another exurban or rural looking road. Wow. Were we anywhere near civilization? Count C. Yeah, like we were pretty getting pretty close to Beaumont. We were way northeast of Houston. This we can see has a distinctly different landscape. We have some mature uh, 
a really conical kind of pyramid shaped evergreens as opposed to southern pines. Uh, southern pines would definitely be scraglier, right? Like we were seeing there in Louisiana. This is interesting, this little log cabin like construction here, Dallas Avenue, Dallas Avenue. Certainly seems like a clue. However, another clue, no front plates, no front plates there, no front plates on the car behind it. So that always points us to the southeast. If we were in Texas, we would almost assuredly have front plates here. What else can we get off of this landscape? Republican mayor advertisement. What's our area code? We can get one off of that sign. If we can't, we might be able to get one off of this sign. DeKalb.co. Mike Lay for mayor. Nah, this isn't giving us anything, is it? Thought I saw like a 269 area code. If that's the case, that would put us, I believe, in nah, 260 area code. That not recognizable. I think we're going to get a really big clue down this road, though. I really do. Auburn Drive, Indiana. Yep, Auburn, Indiana. So really helpful for them to have that address right there. 260. Yep. So everything's falling into place. Auburn, Indiana is actually in northeast Indiana. If we zoom out of Texas and we zoom up here, almost to the Michigan and Ohio borders, we see Auburn, Auburn, Indiana. So we're right here at Mediacom in Auburn. Notice that uh, there's a big automotive museum in Auburn. That's a popular tourist destination. What else could have got us to Indiana if we didn't see that sign? The 26 area code definitely could have done that, if you know that area code. I think the general landscape was much, much closer to where we were in northern Illinois, in Marengo, Illinois. If you can see, we're almost on a similar latitude to that. We're just a little bit farther south. But things are flat, things are green, there's a very healthy mix of deciduous trees, evergreen trees. So I would be compelled to think upper Midwest here, middle Midwest, if that's a thing. I mean, Ohio, Indiana area, I think anywhere in Ohio really could have been uh, a good plonk for this. Maybe we're a little bit more rural than that, of course, but we have a lot of rural parts of Ohio as well. Maybe you just saw Auburn. Where could Auburn be? I immediately thought Auburn, Indiana, just because of the Midwest vibes, the Republican stuff everywhere. Indiana's a really red state. Auburn Drive and Grand's Taft. So we are, it looks like, on Auburn Drive. Yeah, Auburn Drive in Dallas. See, Dallas was kind of a red herring. I didn't, you know, there wasn't anything about Dallas here. There's a Dallas County, Iowa. So Iowa would have been a much better plonk, I think, than somewhere in the DFW area. If you say we're no moving or something and just saw Dallas. This very historic, farmy kind of architecture wide open, mostly flat kind of spaces. Like I say, this very Midwestern, Eastern Midwestern mixture of trees. Doesn't look like Minnesota, Northwoods, probably isn't somewhere in Wisconsin, Minnesota. So anywhere really in this area, I think would have been a good plonk. So where is Auburn and Dallas? It looks like Auburn has a grid system, which is helpful. South 1800 and Auburn Drive, South 1800. If we're indeed in Auburn, which we really have to be, right? Yeah, because so many things said Auburn. We weren't in a little town leading into Auburn. 
So there's Auburn Drive, Dallas Avenue, South 1800, West 1600. There's Dallas and Auburn. We went slightly east, southeast towards Dallas and Auburn. So right about there. 5K in Auburn, Indiana. Where is our fifth and final seed? I really want a challenge. I've had some pretty good clues so far. This map is usually a pretty tough one. We're talking about U.S. maps because a lot of times you don't get those clues, especially no moving. Yeah, I don't think we can afford to no move here on our final seed. We really just have a pretty mundane looking atmosphere here could we be in the illinois indiana region again i don't think so look at how dense this coverage is there's vines there's large ferns the soil is a little bit brown looking in this direction at this forest, wow, that looks southern to me almost. It's real dense. It's 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 choked out with these vines. It's really green. There's ferns everywhere. Um, could it be somewhere else? Yeah, for sure, for sure. The soil, uh, it's a little sandy. Yeah, it's a little sparse. It's a little sandy. Not seeing much in the way of southern pines, so that's interesting. This foliage is, is, is interesting. Could it be somewhere more mid-Atlantic? I would say that's plausible, but look here at this piney, pine needle covered forest there that to me is indicative of southern pines this kind of uh low almost swampiness in places the fact that like a lot of this undergrowth is happening we're getting a lot of vines don't think this is the midwest it's too green for that it's too southern looking and spots for that we are getting some front plates looks like they have a front plate yeah um so that would eliminate some southern vibes wouldn't it i mean that would lead us more into the mid-atlantic region yeah um, if we were near, yeah, see, anywhere south of Virginia is not going to have front plates. So don't think we're there, but ah, this piney brown soil, these vines growing everywhere. The, um, yeah, we really have that here. Dense undergrowth, dense coverage of foliage. Robinson Painting Company. Can we get anything off of the sign? Nah, no area code, no anything. Ah, we're going to keep going. I would say this is our hardest round so far. Um, we had two clustered close together in East Texas and then in Louisiana. Then we had a couple close clustered together in Indiana, Illinois. I don't think we're in either of those places. So at least we got something a little bit unique here. Eight. Six zero eight six zero. Where could eight six zero be? Wapping Park, town of South Windsor, state of Connecticut. Okay, so we're even more New England than I was thinking. I was thinking Mid Atlantic vibes along the coast there, like maybe Maryland, Pennsylvania. Uh, but those blue and white license plates now make a lot of sense. Sometimes I don't like to commit to Connecticut when I see those because they look a lot like some other U.S. plates. I was thinking that kind of sandy soil or the piney soil we were looking at could be somewhere here. But we are up in Connecticut. How far are we? 
We're close to Hartford, it looks like. So Windsor, South Windsor, Connecticut. New England is sometimes hard. I don't think there wasn't anything about that architecture, really, that was lending itself to New England so much for me. Um, I was thinking just a little bit farther south there, but I'm glad we got some clues. The 860 area code makes sense now. So let's just look for Wapping Park. That should be, uh, yeah, there's Wapping Park. So we were going north east with Wapping Park now on our left. So we would very likely be on this Clark Street in South Windsor. Okay, let's, let me see. Is there anything about this house that I could have gotten Connecticut off of? Oh no, that doesn't look to me to be a New England house. This doesn't look to me to be a super typical New England scene. I think Connecticut looks um, a little bit less like New England than obviously somewhere like Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. I think the plate should have given me pause a little bit more when I saw the blue and the white. Yeah, this, this greenery mixed in with these pines that aren't southern pines really kind of eliminated the southeast. The fact that we had front plates eliminated the southeast. Um, still feel like there's parts of maybe like Virginia, Maryland, uh, and New Jersey that could look like this too, for sure. So we're somewhere around here, I believe. Stanley and Clark in uh, Wapping, Connecticut. Yeah, real, real close. So how do we do? 24, 9, 20. Pretty good. We were a little bit off there in Marengo slash Woodstock, Illinois. I want to break down of that. So our farthest miss, I won't blame you guys, my farthest miss was eight and a half miles. So we had Marengo trash service. Looked like we had a Marengo company, but we were really in Woodstock closer to Marengo. Okay. I don't feel too bad about that, but the McHenry County uh, might have led me a little bit farther east. And I think even when I was running out of time, I thought, eh, maybe a little closer to Chicago. I think that would have paid off, but I'm, I'm happy with 24 920. So I hope you learned a little bit of something uh, about U.S. geography, region guessing in the U.S., and uh, thank you for watching.